Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I have something a little different for you. I didn't even have to leave the studio to make this video. Um, some time ago, a friend of mine who works for the Wix Organ Company brought me some film strips. These were uh, movies that the company had produced in the 1950s and 60s as promotional material. Uh, I assume they gave them to salesmen to show to customers, or maybe customers could request them and they would send them. Uh, I guess having a 16 millimeter projector was probably uh, uh, more common back then. Um, but we took them, had them digitized, and we have them here to show to you. The first one, um, we believe it was recorded in 1958. So this is not indicative of the current Wix Organ Company, and our putting it online is not an endorsement of the Wix Organ Company. We just wanted to show these historical views of an American organ building company from the, from the mid 20th century. Um, while you're watching it, please keep three things in mind for me. The first, if you see somebody you might recognize, you know who they are, you know their name, leave a comment down below. If at uh, 10 minutes and 30 seconds you know somebody, just say that. Here, I think I know that person at that spot. Because um, we'd love to identify everybody that's in this video and get all their names if possible. Second thing is if you have any content, like uh, old videos about organ building, old movies, old films, something um, that you think you'd like to share with the world, we'd love to help you get it out there. Now, we can't just put all of your old home movies online. Um, um, and that's something to remember here while you're watching. So the third thing um, is that it cost us between about 8 and $9 a minute to put this online. So if we were to do more, we would need more sponsorship and more help to make that happen. So you can support the Organ Media Foundation and help us produce more videos like this by going to organ.media and just click on support. And there are a number of ways you can give a number of suggested levels, but any bit helps. You can become a sponsor for as little as $1. The Organ Media Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so all of your contributions could be tax deductible. So now, from 1958, we believe, this is Capturing the Wind. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie in green pastures, leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, in the house of the Lord forever. These words, the 23rd Psalm, were uttered by one of the first creators of instruments of great magnitude, the forerunner of the pipe organ. They were written by David and accompanied by him on a kind of organ which he built himself. As we listen to this great instrument, we can't help wondering what is behind its incredible variety of tone, its magnificent subtlety and beauty of melody, this infinite gamut of sound ranging from earth-shaking majesty to the delicate whisper of a zephyr. What is the secret of this monumental creation? How can one instrument produce such endless diversity of music? What magic lies behind the organ? To answer these questions, let's take a trip together through one of the world's most distinguished organ factories, the Wix plant in Highland, Illinois. Here a peculiar combination of electrical progress and the work of skilled craftsmen results in making an instrument involving age-old arts modern utilization of electrical devices, and the work of skilled hands.
While taking this trip, we will find the thread of a story about artisans, how they make the king of instruments, and how new advances in pipe organ manufacturing contribute to create the ultimate in man's triumphant conquest of the winds. For authentic pipe organ builders, planning is a separate and distinguished department, with each instrument being custom built to individual specifications. With the entire operation starting out with blueprints and raw materials, metal and wood in their natural basic forms. In planning blueprints, every detail is given the attention of experts drawn from many parts of the world. The cabinet making aspects of organ building demonstrate an intricate skill handed down from father to son, father to son, an art unto itself. Many operations remain unchanged for hundreds of years. The old craft, essential to creating harmony in the modern organ. The temperature, consistency, and mixtures of the metals must be in essential balance. Perhaps one of the most familiar of the scenes in an organ factory is the treatment of pipes. The voicing department plays a major role in the final melodious tone of each of the separate voices. The tone of each pipe is born with the heritage of centuries. Men, metal, machines doing precision work. Combined with electrical construction having hundreds of permanent connections. cabinets made of beautifully polished woods. All these factors and many others must be closely and carefully coordinated for the production of the world's most revered and magnificent musical instrument. Heading the administration of this leading pipe organ factory is a young man, Martin Wick, son of one of the company founders. The sales and executive staff travel to all states of the Union wherever organs are installed. They meet artists and friends who know the colorful reeds, the scintillating strings, the mellow flutes, and the stately diapasons. Man's quest for achieving the ultimate takes many forms. Among these is the building of houses of worship. The organ builder, for his part in this quest, is in a position to serve his fellow man by taking raw materials and creating a complete instrument from start to finish. The results are the magical transformation of metal into accurate fittings, the changing of untreated woods into polished forms. the bringing of a mass of wires woven and interwoven into an orderly array of labeled panels representing the voices of pipes awaiting the master touch of the concert artist. Essential to good organ building is the proper laying out, scaling, and fabricating of pipes. There is nothing more true than the fact that the finest voicer is a skilled pipe designer for no artistic voicer can produce his desire in tone if the pipe is improperly made. There are four basic types of organ pipes, the diapason, the flutes, the strings, and the reeds. Here is a colorful reed pipe set, which gives a soft trumpet tone. As with other pipes, they are activated by wind action, controlled by the top board, which we see here under construction. supply is produced by this type of device known as the blower. The direct electric action, considered to be the greatest advance in organ building in the last 50 years, permits the organ pipes to work independently. It is truly a pleasurable experience to 
be around the construction of the instrument under such ideal conditions. Fabrication of metal flue pipes, which are made with closely guarded formulas, is particularly unique. When an alloy known as pipe metal is poured and cooled, spots suddenly appear before your very eyes. In this operation, there have been scarcely any changes affected in the modus operandi for over five centuries. After pouring, they are put into storage areas for aging. Cutting the pipe after the thickness is properly measured must be done in an extremely careful manner. The correct thickness of the metal, which is sometimes tapered, causes the pipe tone to be foundational or broad, while pipes with thin walls have greater harmonic development. Each single note must have its own pipe. This means that in the larger instruments, this process must be repeated several thousand times. Pounding the pipes causes quite a bedlam with the rafters ringing with racket. And some visitors may wish they were outside as they find that pipe organ making isn't necessarily limited to listening to the dulcet tones of the pipes. But the noisy and methodical hammering and the rolling of pipe are vital in achieving the myriad tone colors found in the organ. From those with powerful resonance to those with delicate harmony. Organ pipes, like some humans, have to take quite a beating before they become well-rounded characters. Cutting away the lower part of the pipe so that the upper lips can be soldered onto these cuts in the pipe is done in a most ingenious fashion. You just have to be good to do it. The feet of reed pipes are nearly always cone-shaped. The parts are made to assume the proper curve by turning the metal on a mandrel and pounding it to form. The foot of the pipe has a toe, and this is rounded off to give a perfect surface around the hole through which controlled wind passes. Soldering the pipe, such as we see here, has to be done with great accuracy to ensure a true tonal quality that is smooth, round, and velvety, the speech being unforced, natural, and in balance. Attaching the ear to the pipe is usually the last soldering process. You can ask almost any work. It's a difficult task to form the correct seam. But the young lady who is turning out this job seems not too perturbed over its difficulty. Yes, all the intricate mechanical action, relays, switches, chest, cables, reservoirs, soldered parts and connections are lost to view when the organ has been installed. But the skill of the master craftsman and the tone are obvious to anyone with an ear for music. In order to have rare tonal beauty, the organ manufacturer must have a voicing staff with an enviable reputation. In the pursuance of his art, a voicer must regulate the heights of the mouth manner in which the pipes shall be nicked. The tonal director decides upon the shape of the language, the width of the mouth, and other such matters required to give the organ a certain tem. The voicer gives each pipe a personality of its own. 
From a piece of ordinary wood or metal, he makes a creation of singing beauty. Many members of the wood family are utilized, with spruce the most prominent, because of its rare resonance and durable qualities, such as is used in the soundboards of the finest pianos. Other phases of construction, such as expression louvers, pedal boards, and ornamental grill fabrication, can be seen by visitors in their tours of the plant. For consoles, woods of rare grain and beauty are finished to exacting requirements. Expression and crescendo pedals are used to control volume of tone. Here we see one under construction. One of the fascinating operations, and accomplished by fascinating personnel, is the keyboard construction. The balance or pressure of each key, which may activate one or many pipes, must be exact and uniform to satisfy the discerning organist. The final construction of the console is the fitting of hundreds of parts into the hole. Each part must be perfect, all appointments in accord with the American Guild of Organist standards. In telling the story of organ development, one chapter would have to be devoted to the direct electric action developed in this plant. At one time before this unique achievement, pipe organs could not be played rapidly because of cumbersome key and pipe valve action. Because of the deterioration of leather parts, constant repairs were also necessary. As a result of such operations such as this, the organ now has instantaneous response, trouble-free service, plus tonal beauty which comes only from great pipes a beauty made possible by intensive and detailed work. Just watch the making of this switch. Seems simple, doesn't it? But if you think it's easy, just try it sometime. It takes 20 seconds to finish this operation. After the electrical action is constructed, it is always tested thoroughly under pressure to guarantee lifetime service. It is the control of electricity, the elements of the wind or air activating individual pipes, which tells the final story. These are unique balance valves used for the larger pipes of the instrument. To assure a copious supply of regulated air, large size reservoirs are constructed and used. Anyone who really knows the glory of music will realize that it is impossible to stamp out a Stradivarius mechanically. The pipe organ maker likewise strives to complete an instrument as priceless as the finest handmade violin. There is no substitute for great diapasons. For example, only this magnificent structure gives a tone which the pipe organ alone can produce. Leading organists throughout the world all insist the tone which comes from the pipes of this mightiest of instruments can be produced in no other way. The story of the organ 
is a story of meticulous care, dutiful attention to detail, the gathering and using of the finest materials, reinforced construction for long use, service over a period of years, and finally, the approbation of renowned professional individuals and artists in the field of organ construction. It takes hours of planning, the using of top talent in making the intricate electrical and remote control circuits needed to make the masterpiece actually perform. These are the criteria of measurement of reputation, which take generations to build and maintain. It is more than machinery. It is utilizing needed advancement, and it is skill, pure and simple, the skill of artisans, the kind of skill which will never be replaced by machines. These delicate pipes are the key to that character and beauty of tone, which is today the culmination of several thousand years of man's attempt to control the winds, to beautify his sanctuary of worship. This intricate device holds the key to such achievement. The invention called the direct electric action. Its creation means that the organist will be able to triumph. Triumph with honest, sonorous, vibrant, true pipe organ tones. The master work of man in his age-old battle to capture the wind.